How's it going everyone? Minus Party here, bringing another episode in the Pokemon TCG series. So, it's been a while since I've been playing some theme and I really want to get back into it. And there's a deck that's been frustrating me for a long time now, and that's the Intellion theme deck. And I want to get better with this deck. So, I want to just sit today, play a few more games with it, discuss it, and really just ask all of you to leave a comment down below on how you play this deck. So, I've really been struggling with this deck. Um, I can never seem to get it work. And I've seen a few posts come up every now and again that this deck is really, really good. Um, and I want to get there. I want to be able to get there with this deck. But I really struggle with it. Uh, this is not a great start. I'm really glad that I can at least play hop on this first turn. So I really struggle with this deck. And I don't know if it's just because it's like counters my playstyle or if I'm playing it really badly. So if you've got any advice for me, I'd really, really appreciate it because I feel like this deck's got potential and I'm not really unlocking that potential, which is sad because I feel like this deck could do really well. Um, as for this opening hand, it's not great, but at least my opponent is going to be playing quite slowly. Now, I could go into Water Arrow. Now, the problem is the, this Cromont is not going to pick up a KO on this first turn. Let me hop, let me see what I get. So what I can do... Let me see if I can get a cheeky pick off. Okay, no cheeky pick offs there. Let's great ball this. We can bring this out. Um, do I want to get an early Kingler? You know what, I think I'd rather have Cromart in active spot regardless. And as for the water arrow, I'm not going to pick up KO on Farfetch, so I'd rather put that 20 damage on the back line. Because it's going to take me three turns to get through the Farfetch either way. So I'd rather essentially just go for the two water guns. At least that way I've got 20 damage on the arena, which will help down the line when it eventually turns into Nidoqueen. Queen. All right, so let's hop again. Uh, there's the water arrow, which the energy for water gun, which I needed. Let's hop again. Let's see what we get. Come on, can we get a? There's a sobble. Okay, that's really good. So I'm glad I did it this way around, because this next turn I can poke gear for a um, a kid to bring out the next version uh, to bring out dribble, and then I can go into Intellion on the next turn. Okay, so this is looking a little bit better. I'm scared of a very early Nether Queen, especially seeing, ah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, especially seeing two energies on it, I'm really scared of an early Nether Queen. So that's a worry. I really wish I got that Pokemon catcher off early, um, earlier, so I could have put some damage on this Nether Queen, because that is worrying. Uh, turn three Nether Queen is very, very worrying for me. Okay, Farfish is gonna go down this next turn, which means the Nether, I wonder if Nether Queen's gonna come in. No, they're going to bring another Farfetch by themselves time. Okay, that is worrying. Because I don't want to be giving Relentless Flame time. Okay. Um, I don't want to risk not getting what I need. Okay, I got nothing for that, unfortunately. So let's go hop. There's the drizzle. Let's start charging that up. Let's get the other Chroma down. And let's go. Water gun. Because next turn, when I go, I can bring Intellion out and I can knock out that Farfetch in one turn to put a bit more pressure on my opponent, which is something I need. I, you can't let Relentless Flame get away from you. You need to apply that pressure. Nidoqueen Queen is a serious problem in the sense that, oh, that is huge for me. That is huge for me, them failing their time ball. Uh, yeah, the problem is Intellion won't get a knockout with Hydro Snipe. But it might be able to just slow down the Nidoqueen Queen a little bit, which will help. All right, so um, there's the Poke Kid, which I was hoping for earlier, but that's okay. Let's retreat into Intellion. Don't want to give my opponent any more time than they than they could use. Um, let's Poke Kid this. Let's Poke Kid this this turn. Let's bring out the. 
Do I want the Kingler or do I want the Dreadnought? I think I want the Dreadnought. Let's bring up Dreadnought. I don't want to play Ordinary Rod just yet. So let's Hydro Snipe. And let's keep this pressure going. I want to play as quickly as possible against this deck. They actually brought Queen out. Now, they're not going to be able to get a knockout this turn. But if I get lucky, they're not going to have an extra energy in their hand. Which is what I'm really hoping for. So they're going to be dealing 110 damage. Yeah, they're going to be dealing 110 damage, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So my Antelian is going to go down on the next turn. So maybe I'm going to save my Ordinary Rod until then. And hopefully I get super lucky this turn. Um, do I want a Pokemon catch this? I don't think I want to. Let's ball the suit we get. There is the Kingler. Ooh, that Sobble actually has some really good value. Because I can start building it to a second um, Intellion, which actually I think to me has a bit more value. You know what? I'd rather just prof now. Yeah, that was worth it. I'm happy with that. Because I can start charging up my second soul now. And from here, I can go into a Hydro Snipe. And hopefully, my opponent doesn't have another. Well, the thing is, it's going to bounce it back to their hand, which is going to slow down their energies. It's not going to be enough, but it will slow them down slightly. I just need to get enough time to get my second Intellion online. Yeah, that's really early Nidoqueen queen was a big problem for me. Big, big problem. At least we're able to get a second Intellion out this game. But the issue is... I think we're losing another prize card to the Nidoqueen. queen. Even if it's a Cromorant drop. Okay, there's the Kingler, which is quite nice. There's the Drizzle, which is quite nice. I'll we'll drop Manta in case I need, need to use that Water Reserves later. Okay, there's some Energies, which is also quite nice. Um, let's put that... I'm going to put it on the Kingler. I'm actually going to put on the king now. Let's see what happens. So my logic for that is that if my opponent doesn't knock off my Cromorant, I can then essentially switch out on the Kingler to get the pick of another queen. Which means that I'll, they'll have to then swap into one of the Charizards, which gives me a better match in for the Intellion to come in. Um, and if they do knock off my Cromorant, at least then I can bring in Kingler, use Heavy Pincers to get the knockout of another queen. And again, then they'll be swapping in a Charizard, and then I can bring Intellion in to knock out that Charizard. And they'll take me down to two prize cards. But the issue is then dealing with that last Charizard. Okay. So here comes Kingler. Kingler will knock out into the Queen. That which will bring in Charizard. Let's get that down there. Let's bring that down there. Let's drop another Krabby. The thing is... What's the retreat cost on this thing? Ah, it's still quite high. Um, I can poke a kid this turn. And I can bring up my other Kingler. I can't evolve this turn, but I can evolve it next turn. Let's go for Heavy Pincers. At least I'm I'm also getting rid of a card, which I might get lucky with. It wasn't it wasn't energy, which isn't the best thing to get rid of. I was really hoping to get rid of like a Brock's Grit. That would have been awesome. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Or oh, another Nidoqueen Queen would have been great. Yeah, there's the second Charizard. Okay, um, that is a big, very big problem. There's Brock's Grit. Mm, that's unfortunate.
Okay. So Kingler gets knocked out here. Antelian comes in. Antelian knocks out Charizard. Charizard 2 comes in. How do I get rid of Charizard 2? Because the issue is Dreadnought is going to take time to come online. Let's get that down there. I was considering charging up this Chromeron, but I think it's a waste. Let's go into Dreadnought instead. Let's prof again. Well, it's an energy hand. Uh, I don't need to play that tutorial, there's no reason. Alright. I wish I could silent shot, but I can't. So let's hydro snipe this. There's a switch, which is decent. Um, I'm going to have to buy some time with Cromorant. That extra 40 damage will actually give me the KO on the Charizard on the next turn with Dreadnought, at least. Or well, I guess Dreadnought will get a KO either way. Okay, so prize card 3 is Inteleon, prize card 2 is Cromorant, and prize card 1 is going to be Dreadnought. So my Dreadnought needs to be able to close this game. And for me, I'm going to be able to knock out this Charizard in two turns with Dreadnought. So Charizard is going to be a KO. That was a bit of overkill, but anyway. Okay. Let's bring out Cromorant. How many energies has my opponent gone through already? They've already gone through six. So they've still got a lot of energies left in their deck. That's unfortunate. Okay. Um, let's get that energy over there. And let's go for Water Arrow. Okay. Dreadnought can come in and get a KO. Off that fact, getting through this Rapidash is gonna be is gonna come down to luck. Now what I can do Next turn the energy goes into Dreadnought. Then what needs to happen is I was actually silly. I should have water arrowed the Rapidash. Because then it would have been a one-shot range from Kingler. Because the issue is... Um, Mantan... Takes two energies to come online. That water arrow should have gone into Rapidash. Yeah, that was a silly play. There was no, the thing is, there was no point putting it here because Dreadnought gets the KO either way. That was silly of me. I should have put it in the back line instead. Okay. Let's put the energy there. I uh, definitely don't want to make my, my deck any smaller. So let's go for Vice Bite. And let's hope my, my opponent fails this flip. For agility. The thing is, if they pass this agility flip, I'm in trouble. I win if they fail this flip. I'm in trouble if they don't. Okay. Alright, so we ended up picking up a win with the Intellian deck against Relentless Flame, which is always a really, really good thing. Especially considering my opponent had a turn 3 near the Queen. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I must say, I'm actually very happy with that. The fact that I was able to get, a, get that win. Ah, I forgot I actually had the Water Challenge, which is quite nice. Alright. Um, let's go into the Metal Challenge. Cool, let's have another one. So I'm probably going to have three or four games with this. As I said, I really want to get better with, with this Intellian deck. I think a big part of this deck is being able to get your Intellian out really, really early. I think Kingler's a trap. The three energies on Kingler is a trap. I don't think it's that valuable. Unless you're playing against someone like Towering Heights, where your opponent tends to have a lot of uh, damage counters um, spread along their Pokemon, then I guess I can kind of warrant it. But I think it's actually a trap. Not a great opening hand. My opponent Mulligan does well, so that's something at least. Okay, Mantine makes his hand good. I was about to say this is a terrible hand, but seeing him going into Mantine is quite good. Okay. Let's see. What can I do with this? Um, 
So again, this is kind of one of those like not great, not terrible hands. Let's just pause for now and see what they do. Okay, again, it's not the far fetch. That's probably one of the like most frustrating starts uh, for my opponent to have. I was hoping they would have started with like a Nidoran or something. Um, because unfortunately, Wave Splash doesn't get the pick off. Wave Splash would have been able to knock out any of the other basic tough Pokemon other than far fetched. But unfortunately, they had far fetched. So it is what it is, but it is certainly unfortunate. Um, let's bring off that Sobble because I want to get that evolution going as quickly as possible. Let's drop that down there. Let's Poke Gear this into. Uh, Poke Gear's not terrible. I was actually really hoping for Professor in that sense. So let's Professor this into a Drizzle. I'll Professor this, Poke Kid it. And Water Reserve. One, two, three. Let's go. The thing is, I wanted to play Poke Kid this turn in case I drew into a trainer on my next turn. The fact that I've got to have two wave splashes to get through this far fetch is an issue. Can't afford two turns. Okay, let's get that over there. Nothing else to do other than wave splash. Let's keep this pressure up. Hopefully they're not able to get Nidder Queen online soon. The Nidder Queen is a big problem against the with when using the Intellian deck because it takes a while to get through it. All right, so it looks like they had quite a bad hand. So this hand reset's definitely a bad thing for me. Okay. Great ball. Can we get an Intellion? Can't get an Intellion, but I can get a second Sobble going, which is something, I guess. Um, let's start charging up that Drizzle. And let's go for Wave Splash. Let's see what my opponent brings out here. I can currently knock out everything, which is good. Honestly, I would Pokemon Catcher on this next turn to get rid of this Nidoran with the charge up energy. Especially if they put a second energy there. Okay, it comes forward, which means I presume they have the evolution. I'm going to be taking some damage on this next turn, which is unfortunate. Interesting. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't Poke Catcher into that. Um, well, there's no. Well, I can, but there's no point to doing it. Yeah, there's the core family. All right. At least I can get rid of an energy, which is something. And they're going to go into far fetch the next turn. Okay, I see you. Um, for now, I want to spread this in case they knock out this Mantine, or Mantine, sorry. This is a bit of a slow hand, which is worrying me a lot. It really is worrying me a lot because I can't afford to be having a slow game. There's the Dreadnor. So I can start charging up Dreadnor because that's going to be huge against Nidder Queen. I guess maybe that energy should have gone onto Tutor. I was considering it, but I, I thought it would have not been the best play. But now, looking back, I think it would have been better. I'm going to see if I can poke a catch into the Bonita. Can I get lucky? I do. Okay, let's get that knockout. Let's carry on applying this pressure. Let's go here. Eh, uh, not great. I put an actually yielded. Okay, we're doing pretty decently. Two wins against Rentus Flame with this deck, which is really, really good. Alright, let's see what we can bring to this table. Alright, I think I'll actually, I'll have one more game and I'll actually open up those boosters, for interest's sake. So we're in a two win streak against Renata's Flame with the Intellian deck, which is quite surprising for me. Okay, here's a hard matchup, Soaring Storm. This is a very difficult matchup. So let's see if we can bring this home. Um, Nico5565. Okay, this is a tough matchup because you're playing into weakness and Soaring Storm is a deck I consider to be the top deck at the moment. Um, I'm gonna go for the super cheeky play. 
Because Dreadnought takes so long to bring online, I'm gonna go for the cheeky play. And I, it has not paid off. It has not paid off. Um, that's a problem. That's a big problem. So, the issue with this is the fact that so long as my opponent has a uh, Tornadus, I'm dead in the water. So I'm going to rather just charge up Tutor and let Sobble go down. What I wanted to do was go for the cheeky Sobble into Drizzle into Intillion, which is a Poke Kid. But yeah, that's exactly what I was worried about, was the Pokemon Fan Club. Because they can now go out into Tornadus, and they're going to be hitting me for a lot very quickly. So my idea is to go into Dreadnorm, into Jawlock. But to do that, I need another basic Pokemon. Because I need to buy myself another turn. This is so sad, but I actually need a Poke Kid, a basic Pokemon. Krabby, my friend, you're taking one for the team. And then next one I can Prof's Research. Because unfortunately, I'd need to buy my Dreadnought another turn. Are they going straight into Dragonite? That's scary. My, I must say, my opponent had a really good opening hand. Really, really good opening hand. Okay, let's go for hop this turn. I can prof next turn then. Uh, that was not great. Ah, uh, now I wish I profed. Yeah, super early Dragonite. Alright, um... This is problematic. I need to hope my, my opponent just doesn't have energies. Speak of the devil. The issue is like I can't even Pokemon catch that because, a yeah, I can't Pokemon catch it because I have to knock out the Thunderous because Thunderous knocks me out. Okay, have to Poke Kid a Sobble, which is ridiculous. Let's get Sobble down. Let's get that there. Let's draw lock. Let's hope my opponent doesn't have one more energy. Because they do, I'm in serious trouble. I actually think it's game. If they, have, if they have another energy in their hand, it's game. I do 120 with Vice Bite, so I may as well just go for Jaw Lock, and at least that way they can't retreat. They didn't have an energy. That's huge. That is so huge for me right now. Okay, let's get Mantine down. I don't think there's any water energies there that I want to bring back, so... Ordinary Rod, I don't actually even want to use. Let's start getting that there. Let's prof this hand away. Hopefully into an Intellion. That's not an Intellion. Uh, I can get a Cromorant down in case I need something to just... tank some damage for me. And Dreadnought, your luck. And let's hope my luck continues. Did they top deck an energy? I'm not sure why my opponent went straight to Dragonite play. To me, that's a misplay. You already had a Thunderous and a Tornadus on the bench, right? And you know you're playing into Intellion, whose weakness is Lightning. So, why not go charge up your Thunderous instead? It's a very strange play for me. I, I don't agree with what my opponent did. At all. Okay, let's get the Intellion down. I'm tempted to not Professor this hand away because I've got my Dreadnor. And I wouldn't mind building into a second Dreadnor. Because this is prize card 3 for my opponent. This is prize card 2. I need one more Pokemon. Um, so I don't really want to Dreadnor this. I won't get rid of that Dreadnor. Alright, so let's draw lock. If I can get another Sobble out, actually, that'll be quite nice. Because I can go Sobble Drizzle. This Dreadnought is putting in work, though. 
The straight nose putting in some very good work. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with my opponent's play there. Might actually have to. Cause I don't think I've played any I've got no Pokemon catches there yet. So my opponents are Thunderous down. They're five energies down as well, which is good for me, and they're two uh, two draw threes down. Okay. Right, they finally got their Pidgeotto out, which was a very good Pokemon communication on their side. Alright. Um, let me hop this turn, hopefully getting a Pokemon Catcher. Not getting Pokemon Catcher or a Sobble, which is quite a frustration. Um, at this stage, I think I might actually start charging up this Mantine as a just in case. Because I can always energy switch it later. Let's draw lock this. My concern is now Intellion doesn't get the, the KO here. But I guess Hydro Snipe will slow them down, which is decent. And they won't be able to one shot my Intellion either. Okay, um, so I think Dreadnought's going down here, which means Intellion will have to come out in the next turn. <sighs> My issue is I don't have an option after Intellion goes down. I don't want to prof this hand away. Alright, let's bounce that energy. Which just means that Intellion will actually survive that hit. My concern is what to do after it, because I've still got three prize cards left, because this is prize card three. Prize card two, I wouldn't be surprised if it's that lantern. And then my last prize card is probably going to end up being that Dragonite. It's probably gonna go 3, 2, 1. Or 3, 2, 1. Depending on what their energy situation in their hand is. That's a little bit scary. There's a Sobble. Okay. That's good. I just need to be able to pull out this other than this next Intellion. So now here's a question. No, actually the spread is better. 1-1 one, one is better than sending it back. Um, so here I want a silent shot. So there's nothing else to really do here. Um, next one I'm going to energy switch. So let's silent shot this. Hopefully discarding a good card from their hand. Switch is arguably a decent card. So I'm happy seeing Switch gone. I really hope that Tornados doesn't come in and knock me out. There's the Intellion. Okay, that's big. That is really, really big. Um, mm, I was worried about that. Ah, oh, that's a problem. Because that's game. Ah, oh, that's a big problem. I need to draw Pokemon Catcher. And catch that Dragonite. Oh, that's frustrating. That is really, really frustrating that they, that they got a second Dragonite out this game. The Sobble just came too late. have to prof this hand. Because the thing is, I lose this game this turn. I have to prof it and hope for a catcher. 
Nope, no catcher. Best game. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Where are my Pokemon catchers? Ah, oh, man, that's frustrating. Because my plan was to Pokemon catcher into the Dragonite to buy myself some time. To hopefully then get an old new rod out to get the Intellion going again. Ah, oh, man. Well, well played to my opponent. Um, this really is not a nice matchup for Intellion. And I'm honestly happy I got down to two prize cards considering my opponent's start. They had an amazing start. Some, like, a really bad play for my opponent, which I was able to punish. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to punish enough. Um, it is what it is. But it was certainly unfortunate. Well played to my opponent, though. Ah, well. Unfortunately, ending the video on a defeat is not great, but it is what it is. But hey, at least I can open up some boosters, which is something nice. So let's get those boosters going. Uh, collection. Packs. Let's open up these black and whites. Let's see if there's anything good that can come out of this. So... Interesting. Alright, got ourselves to pig, a pat rat, a venipede with poison point. Uh, got the uh, switch, Snivy, eh, an eh, war turtle, a charmeleon, a duot, a switch, and a whimsicott with fluffy tag. Switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. During your next turn, the attacks of that Pokemon do 40 more damage to the active Pokemon. Oh, that's quite cool. Let's open another. And let's see what we can get. Alright. Got ourselves a Scyther, a Sproink. A Pokeball, another Tepig, a Farfetch'd, a Mandibuzz, Golduck, a nice looking Padov, and a Victini. Not terrible, but not fantastic. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please, if you've got any tips for my Intellian plays, do let me know. It's a deck I want to improve on, it's a deck I think I have potential with, and I think the deck can do quite well. Soaring Storm is a really bad matchup for it, but it does do really well against Relentless Flame, so it's got that going for it. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing, it really does help me out. And don't forget about the giveaway that's happening this week um, for the Reshiram and Charizard GX deck. Thanks again everyone, cheers, enjoy.